Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 13. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210, Excel 2010 Chapter 1, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're going to start on the sheet Data. We've got to talk about data. <laughs> but wait a second, we've been talking tons about data. Ah, but we've got to talk about types of data and scales of measurement. Now, there's two broad categories for data, categorical and quantitative. As you can imagine, categorical means, hey, this is some category. It's usually some sort of a word, like what kind of car do you drive? What kind of phone do you have? Quantitative just means number. Quantitative means number. All right, so those are the two broad categories. Under categorical, although categor categories are usually words, they're not always. We can have non-numeric, which means word or text, and numeric. Over under quantitative, well, we can only have numbers, right? Now, here comes the levels uh, or scales of measurement. Our book uses scales. Sometimes you'll see people say levels of measurement. Uh, under non-numeric and numeric, we have two different scales or levels of measurement, nominal and ordinal. Nominal and ordinal, one, two. Over here, we have two other three and four scales of measurement, interval and ratio. All right, so this is just the schematic. I now want to go to the next sheet to talk about nominal, then ordinal, then interval, then ratio scales of measurement. And this matters because depending on what type of data or scale it is, will determine what kind of calculations or presentation we can do. Let's go over to the sheet SM1. And we will first talk about the nominal level of data. Now, what characterizes nominal level of data? Well, it's a category or a label, and there's no order or rank. So for example, let's look over here. We have our element here. Each student is listed once. And we have their phone preference. So this is our variable. In this column, the type of data we have is nominal. It means it's just a category or a name, and there's no order to it. There's no innate order to Motorola, Samsung, Nokia. Now, don't get confused. Over here, we can summarize this data and count how many of each phone. The fact that 104, iPhone has 104, which is the biggest, Nokia has this number which is the biggest. That's not it. That's not the category. This is the category. And there's no innate order to these phones. So it's a category or a label. There's no order or rank to the particular category. Another example would be like car types, Ford, Toyota, etc. The information we get from a nominal bit of data is pretty much the what is the name of it, right? And the calculations we can do are pretty limited, like counting. This is a pivot table I created. Now let's go over and look at ordinal. Ordinal is similar to nominal in that it's a, a categorical variable or piece of data. However, let's look over here. Here we had iPhone, Motorola, Nokia. And what are the categories we have here? Excellent, good, OK, poor. Ah, so there's some ranking to these categories. So it is some category, we can rank it. However, we don't necessarily know the difference. Actually, we don't know the distance between each category. One person may say good, and when they jump up to excellent, they mean so much. Another person, absolutely, the distance between good and excellent could be quite different. So we don't, we don't have a fixed difference, distance, I mean. I said that twice in a row. We don't have a fixed distance between each ranking. All right, so here's our elements. We have our variable is rate your instructor. There are four possibilities. This is ordinal data in this column. Now, we can, of course, summarize this. And I use the count if to simply count. Now, we look, we're talking about ordinal and nominal. Now, in some cases, uh, people will use a number to represent the ordinal or nominal category. If I scroll over here, I can see 
someone's chosen one to represent iPhone or two to represent Motorola, this one and two, that's just a category. You cannot, if it's nominal level devil, you cannot do a calculation like add up all of the twos. It just doesn't mean anything. So we're only limited to counting. But over here, if it's ordinal, it means there's some rank. We can do something like, oh, we could actually do the same exact formula on this. Four means the best. And we'd actually get the exact same counts. But we based our calculations on this column, right? You could see the same counts. However, for ordinal data, you can calculate an a average here. So again, there are some differences. The reason they have these categories is because we have different types of information. This information does give us the name of the category, and it does give information that says which one is best. And we can do a few more calculations like averages. Now that's ordinal and nominal. Now let's go look at interval. Now the difference between ordinal and interval, interval is exactly the same as ordinal, except for finally, when we rank. So there's a scale, Fahrenheit temperature. Each one of these numbers is the category. This is 217, 216. It is ranked. This one is hotter than this one. 216 is hotter than 215. And we know the distance between it. So what characterizes interval over ordinal is that we finally have a fixed distance. <clears throat> a frog in my throat. We have a fixed distance between each ranking. Now let's come over here. So here we have our quantitative variable or data, interval and ratio. Interval is what, we what we're talking about. And we have a category. It's ranked. And we have a fixed distance between each uh, ranking. Now we have a few examples here, Fahrenheit, Celsius, SAT scores. Now what characterizes interval? It's a number. It's ranked or ordered and has a fixed unit between each rank. If 0 is in the scale, it's just a point on the scale. So for example, Fahrenheit and Celsius, if I scroll way down here, Celsius, there it is, 0, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And then 0 for Fahrenheit minus 17 degrees Celsius. So if there's a 0, it's just a point on the scale. Now for SAT scores here, and another example like IQ score, there is no 0. All right, But 0 is just a point on the scale. That is different than our ratio level when we get to things like money. Money, 0 means you have none. All right, A test score on a test in this class, you get from 0 to 100. So 0 means you got none right. That would be an example of ratio. So for interval, 0 is just a point on the scale. 0 does not indicate that nothing exists, right? On a money, 0 means nothing exists. On a test in this class, 0 means you got 0 right. SAT score or IQ test, there, there isn't even a 0. But even if there was, it wouldn't mean you have no thinking ability. All right. So what kind of calculations we can, can we do here? Or what kind of information we have? We have category, ranking, distance. Uh, so more information than the two earlier categories. Now what kind of calculations? We can certainly count calculation. We can certainly calculate an average. But here's a calculation we can't do for interval that we can do for ratio. Let's look down here. We have student 6 got 904, student 10 got 1808. You're not allowed to do a ratio here. right? You can't say this divided by that, which will give us 2, because student 10 did not do twice as good as student 6. And the reason why is ratios are meaningless, because 0 does not mean that nothing exists. If this scale started at 0, then you could say that this is twice as big as this. But it didn't. On a test in this class, if you get 25 points and 50, you can say, you can. You're allowed to say twice as good. And the reason why is because the scale started at 0. This scale did not start at 0. All right, so interval, we have uh, 
categories, rankings, the distance between them. We can do a bunch of calculations. We're not allowed to do a ratio. That's why the next level is called ratio. And let's scroll over here. All right, so ratio level. And this is uh, most of the data, especially later in later chapters when we're doing probability distributions and whatnot. Uh, the numeric data, notice it's a number, is ranked. There's a fixed unit between each rank. Zero means that nothing exists, and division or ratio is OK. So for this type of data, and by the way, Kelvin is a temperature scale. We looked at Fahrenheit and Celsius. Kelvin, if I go down to the bottom, Kelvin does start at zero. This zero means the total absent of, absence of molecular kinetic energy. The, the, because there's a zero starting point here, these numbers are ratio. We can say 80 degrees Kelvin is twice as big as 40 degrees Kelvin. All right, so we can count dollars. So here we counted how many dollars, how many people had bank accounts between 0 and 100. We can certainly calculate an average. And we can certainly compare FAMS uh, savings to fills. We can do the division, the ratio. FAMS is exactly twice as big as FILLS. We can do percentage change formulas. To go from FILL to FAM, you have to increase by 100%. And again, the reason it's called ratio is because we're allowed to do ratio. And ratio is meaningful because 0 means that nothing exists. All right, so there's nominal, ordinal, ra uh, interval, and ratio. Now let's go over to the sheet SM2. All right, we want to finish up our discussion of, discussion of nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Here's a little data set. I just put these labels up here. They're not part of the data set. These are the variables or field names. Here are our elements, right? So for each student, I want to look at different types of data. So nominal. Certainly, we could list something like a phone, eye color. There's a category name, and there's no rank to these, no innate rank. Ordinal, we could list rank in the class, rating of teacher. Notice, even for rank in the class, it's a number, right? But we really don't know the distance, because the rank was determined on the total points they got. So this ranking, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 16, is the same as uh, bad, OK, good, excellent, right? So both of these are ordinal. Ordinal means there is a category. They are ranked. But we don't know the distance between each rank. Interval. Interval, body temperature, SAT score. So for both of these, these are, are scales, right? This one happens to have a 0 point, but it's just a point on the scale. This one does not. Right? So it's a category, it's a rank. We do know the distance between each rank. And 0 is just a point on the scale. Ratio, not OK. And finally, the ratio level. The word ratio means, sure enough, we can jump from interval. All the same things that are true about interval are true for ratio, except for now. 0 means we don't have any. And ratios are OK. And again, ratios are OK because we started at 0. So ratio, we have score on a final, money in the bank. Ratio, we have a category of rank. We know the distance between each rank. Zero means nothing exists, and ratio is OK. All right, uh, scales of measurement. When we come back in our last video, we'll talk about the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. See you next video.